Hey gang, Rod at East Coast Lumberjack. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, be sure you hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. Uh, I appreciate that because you'll be the first ones to get the new videos as they come out. Now, last week we looked at a log, a beautiful, nice, long log. It was, uh, how many was it? Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen feet long, actually sixteen feet log, sixteen foot log. And I showed you how to read the bark on the outside and how to move it and pick out, make the most use of that log. Okay, if you have a knot, you want to put the knot between two blocks, which is what we did on, on one. It's, it's a little bit longer one out here now, and it's got a, I'm going to cut that knot off it, and then we'll have beautiful wood uh, down the rest of the, the uh, length of that three-foot piece. Now, a few other things I've been thinking about <laughs> that I want to show you. Is, so this is splitting out wood and how to do it to get the most handles out of your log that you can. Now, this works for both ash and hickory. Okay, because bark doesn't lie. And hickory and ash bark are fairly similar. They're, they're not too different. Um, ash has deeper grooves and it's softer bark. I'll tell you that. Um, hickory is tough. Actually, hickory bark is tougher than ash wood. <laughs> In my humble opinion, it's tough stuff. But there's a few things I want to talk to you about. Now, last week we split out around some knots. Okay, and I showed you what that looked like so that you could tell on the outside of the wood when you see that little curl, that little round circle in the bark. And you got to have a good eye to, to find it, but when you look at a log closely, you can see it. And you know when you're going to buy that log, even though you're asking for, you know, four clear faces, that face is not clear. Okay, even though there's no knot on it. So again, you're going to have to negotiate a little bit with your buyer. And I'm doing this video, so that actually share these videos with people you're getting logs from so that they can they'll you can explain what's going to happen and they'll know because most guys that are cutting in the woods they're not doing all this stuff okay i'm doing this because i'm not only my logger but i'm also an axe handle maker okay and uh at east coast lumberjack we make really good quality handles and i'm and i'm revealing to you all my secrets <laughs> everybody says what are you doing cumberland well you know what i for years and years i've gone to youtube if i need to figure out how to change a window in my truck or Take something off. What I was this morning. How to fix? I I've lost my mouse cursor on my Acer laptop. Where the what? Where the heck did that go? So when I go on there and I Google it, man, there's a video pops up. How to find your your uh, cursor on an Acer whatever Aspire Five. So right on. You know, like so. This is my gift back to you people that have helped me over the years. So I'm not sure whether many computer people are actually making axe handles. However. <laughs> This is what you do. Now, when you split out a piece of wood where there's a knot, okay, I'm doing this so you can show this to other people so they know. If you're buying a log from a guy and he's saying, man, this is a beautiful log, it's nice and clear, and you see that little gnarl in there, okay, get him to watch this 10, 15 minute video. Say, hey, listen, look at the East Coast Lumberjack. He's gonna explain to you what happens when I buy this log for a veneer price, but it's actually gonna wind up being firewood for me. <laughs> So, how that happens. So, when you split off, now again, this piece here, you remember we did it last week, and I circled right here in yellow where the knots were, where these little round gnarls are, and you can see this, this little round gnarl, still see it very clearly here, okay? So the diamonds are going this way, and then right here in the middle, there's a circle. Okay, now when we look on the inside, see what's happened? Look at the grain, okay? The grain goes in a lot. Okay, now I've got another video that talks about runout. And runout, if I was to lay a handle on this log, we're going to have the grain, and, and I, cut my, uh, I cut my pattern out like I always do. I lay my pattern here, and I cut it out. Right here where the grain is pinched here, and the grain is pinched here hard, what's going to happen? You're going to have a lot of runout in your handle. Okay, and ask guys how much do we like runout. We don't. <laughs> okay, and I tell people, rule of thumb, Count the number of grains at the end of your handle, at the eye end, or at the handle end, but usually the eye end. And uh, if you have 20 grains, okay, 20 growth rings, my rule of thumb is don't take a handle that has more than a quarter of those. So if you have 20, a quarter, that's five. If you, if you look down the length of the handle and there's more than five grains running out, don't buy it because it's not going to be a really strong handle. Okay, there's a lot, 
again, it might be a decent handle for a while, but eventually it's that runout is going to cause you problems. And, and if it splits, it's going to split along that runout. Typically, from my experience after 30, almost 40 years in this racket, okay? Now, if you look at the other side of this piece of wood, okay, that's where the grain's going crazy. Look at this side here. See that grain? is just as straight as a die the whole way along there. That's what you want. That's what East Coast Lumberjack puts in their handles right there. But now sometimes, I will try, now what I would probably do is take a hatchet handle out of here. Because on this side, the grain is pretty straight right here. But if I come up here, or down here, I'm going to have that run out, and, and it, it, the, it does two things. Number one, if, if it's a wall hanger, you know, if, you, if the axle you're putting the handle in is going to hang on the wall use that okay it's pretty you're going to see lots of grain there it's it looks beautiful when you finish it up okay so if it's a wall hanger use that by all means which is why sometimes i'll ask guys are you using this axe handle or is it a wall hanger if it's a wall hanger i would take this piece of wood and i would use it because number one is beautiful and number two it's not going to matter they're not going to run this but if they're using it i won't sell this as a number one to somebody that's using it uh every day okay it's just not going to happen because i'm going to have all kinds of other good blocks out of this Okay, so that's some ways that you can make the most out of a piece of wood, out of a bolt, where you have knots. Okay, and this one here is really obvious. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, seeing as we're in the midst of splitting. <laughs> now, we're splitting, now this, this is a long log. Okay, I'm standing full up. I'm a six foot tall guy, maybe half an inch off since I've turned 50. <laughs> Nonetheless. So this is a four foot log, okay, it's very high. So, when I'm splitting with this, it's hard to get a whole lot of wreath on my wedges from this high. Okay, so, what I've done is I've got a, the, the end piece that I cut off, it's 16 inches long, if I stand on it, look at that. So now I've got a lot of mechanical advantage here to hit my wedges. And what happens when you first start splitting one out, especially one this long? Now remember, ash, hickory, elms, and oaks are all ring porous hardwoods. Okay, so in all the growth rings here, there's the ring that you can see, there's a whole lot of little vessels in it. And they're all packed nice and tight together around that ring. Ring porous absorbs shock. It makes a really good handle. The other thing it does is it splits uh, vertically really well. So in all honesty, what you just need to do is get the wedges in there, tap them in, then get up and give it a good wallop, okay? What you basically want to do is start that wood splitting. So I set the, what I've done, I just set this one here and then tap it a little bit so that it stays there, okay? And then get up on your purchase <laughs> and come on to it. Now, <laughs> normally it'll pop out. <laughs> but only the first or second time. Now, when I did that and it jumped out, it did split my log here. So, this time when I smack it, it's staying there because it's going in deeper. So it'll, it'll pop out once or twice, maybe three times, but once you see that little hairline crack coming across there, and I've done the same thing on this great big log, I started on this side, I started on this side because I want my splits to meet. So that you don't travel across a bolt that I want to use for handle wood. It's going to travel right down where I'm actually going to split it regardless. So this time, it'll stay there. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so I get this one in here. This one's not popping out anymore. And this one's almost there. Okay. Back up on the perch. There. Now you're just gonna keep driving these babies home. Okay, something else. Something else. So, how to get the most wood out of your logs. So we know this bird here from last week is the butt end. Now, a lot of times when you come up from the butt, there's a sweep at the bottom of the log, which we have here. So if I pull you back, and we look at this log, okay, it doesn't look too bad here, but as we go around it, 
There. You can see it here, okay? We keep walking around it. You can see it's pretty. You can you can tell where that's coming up and sweeping a little bit. Okay, here's from the other side. Now, from here, looks pretty straight right here, doesn't it? So that tells you something. If the wood is straight on this side right here, you can get some straight handle wood from top to bottom. Because what happens where it's sweeping the other way, if we look down the log, if I can do this somehow with this camera, but if we look down the log this way, okay, see how it's, it sweeps in? So it's out at the top and then it comes in in the middle and comes back out again. So it's shaped like a little bit of a C, okay? So when I split that down the full length, that grain is gonna do the same thing. So if you want perfect grain, like East Coast Lumberjack handles normally have, this one isn't gonna do it. You're gonna have a little run out at the top, a little run out at the bottom. Now, if you have run out in a handle, always put it at the palm swell, okay? Big, big key from the East Coast Lumberjack. But you always have run out anyhow at the bottom of the, at the palm swell because that's where it's flaring out. And really, it's not going to cause you as much issue as if you have it at the top where you know there's a lot of torque on an axe head. Okay, so another little secret. And then what I'll do with these ones that have, have that C shape in the grain. So when you're looking at it this way, it's fine. But when you turn it on its side and it's this way, you're going you're gonna to see that go down through the wood. So hopefully when I split this out, I'm going to be able to show you that. Okay, so we're splitting this big butt log here today. Now we've got it split, it's starting down the sides. So what I'll usually do is take another... Uh, that's an old, this is an eight, nine pound uh, wedge. I put it part way down the log, okay? So I'm gonna come down here, see where it's... Ooh, this side here is splitting out beautiful. So I'm gonna come onto this side. Now, the other thing you can do, when your when you're wood's splitting out, look down the crack. If it's, if it's uh, really tough wood, and hickory will do this, you look down there, there's all kinds of fiber still holding on from one side to the other, okay? You're gonna have to beat your, <laughs> beat your guts out to get that thing apart, okay? It's that simple. Um, ash, this one here, if I look down the top of it here, it's clear sailing. So, okay, this is gonna split pretty flippin' easy. So when I put this wedge in part way down, and again, whether there's uh, grains there or not, you're still gonna put the, the wedge part way down and split that the rest of the way. And you'll, it's just going to be a lot easier on this ash where there's no threads from one side to the other. Okay. <clears throat> and when it springs, it's apart. Okay, that's that's a good thing about ash and hickory. See, I'm just I'm just taking my axe and sticking it in that side, and it's it's prying right apart. Which is great. So I know I know it's a part. So sometimes I can put my axe head in here and pull my wedge out and crack it apart just a little bit more. Okay, so I know it's almost the whole way. There we go. Okay. So it's a part. I have two pieces here now. So what I want to do. Okay. So because, remember, because it's the the tree is doing this. Depending on where I split out along this full length, I'm going to have some movement in my wood. And you got to think ahead now on this side. Okay, go. That's not too bad. So when I split this one out here, if I can, so to show you. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. It's not coming very easily. It might actually fall over. Might fall over and hit you guys. <laughs> so what I can do, I can put my wedge underneath it so it doesn't. There. So my wedge is underneath it, holding it up straight. So same thing. Start your wedge in. Get your mechanical advantage. There. Okay. Once it starts, you're all set. Okay. There it is, whole way to the bottom. Pull this out. Okay, so this is what we have. Ah. Okay, here's our pie shape. So I always tell people, you take your pie shape out, 
then of course we're going to take off this outside piece right here so that's about basically a two inch by four inch piece so something else i've learned and i'm passing this along because uh my buddy in iowa it's not sad i can't i haven't chatted with him in a few weeks chris chris at uh what's the name of his business oh look at that Welcome to Keswick. Can you see the deer out here? Look right behind, look right behind my uh, chopping stanchion out here. A little, see them walking there? See those deer walking? They're looking now at us. <whistles> see them? Right in through, you look right in through that little deck where we train. There's three of them. One at the back end here. Welcome to Keswick. <laughs> You, if you're a hunter, there's no deer here, just so you know. <laughs> so, Chris Wast at Wasta Woodworking. Sometimes when I split these out, my split goes down and it travels to the outside. Drives me bananas, okay? You want, <laughs> these Coast Lumberjack is usually in pretty good spirits and good humor for the most part. But when my wood doesn't split out straight, I don't get... Uh, I get a little bit sideways. <laughs> so the key, which I learned from these guys, him and another guy told me this, is because you have more wood on one side than the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split off this inside triangle right here. Okay. And when I split that off, I'm going to have almost the same amount of wood on both sides of my handle. And when you hear that high ring, that's your your wedge has gone down through and your your wood's where you want it to be. So now I've got a rectangular piece. So when I split this out, I'll come in here two inches like I always do. And my split should travel pretty straight down the handle wood. There we go. Okay, so and it's doing, I can't believe how this works, Chris, it's flipping awesome. So you look down here, see that's going right straight to the bottom. I fooled and fussed with this for years and years. Get on YouTube and talk a little bit, and guess what, you learn something. Because no one knows everything. <laughs> Some of us don't know much. <laughs> but what we do know we're willing to pass along to you. So it is traveling out here a little bit at the bottom, so I'm gonna come in. Oh, I remember what, I, there was something else I wanna tell you and I just remember what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna come in a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna start from the other end. And take this down so that I don't waste any wood. So I get the whole thing. Cause it was starting to travel in just a bit. Okay, so there. So here's my piece, okay, so it's about, now, oh yeah, the other thing, what I want to tell you, <laughs> so this is the top, okay, it's the bottom, what happened there now, very interesting, well, what I was going to tell you, I can't tell you. <laughs> It did exactly the opposite. Typically, as we know, when you're coming down a log and you get your butt flare, you're gonna be wider at the bottom. So when you start with your four inch uh, split at the top, but before you get to the bottom, it's gonna be five inches wide. So sometimes you may wanna start a little bit narrower with the top, maybe three inches. When you get to the bottom, it's gonna be four, four and a half. So you can get a lot more pieces out of your log. And of course, if you need it wide for your palm, uh, palm swell or whatever, you have a large eye, Use, put it, that at that end, okay? Put your wide piece at that end. But this one, for whatever reason, I can't figure that out. Start, I started up here at four inches, so this is the bottom. I know because I cut this out at the bottom to drag the log out with, so this is the bottom. And look, it's narrower than the top. So, here's my bolt. What I wanna show you, what I wanna show you, is as I lay it this way, I can see it dips in the middle. Okay, and if I hold it on the side, you can see why. Okay, 
see that it's got a so it sweeps but now if I come from from here to here it's pretty straight okay so this is I can reach out there almost 30 inches so it's pretty straight right there and then it's got a curve at the bottom so even though this isn't going to be the grain there the grain is there is running beautifully straight which is nice okay it's just as straight as a die right here okay but it does have a sweep this way so it's got a sweep this way and on this side it's got a sweep this way so my next piece that comes off of this side is going to be straight the whole way down all right so as i go around this you're going to see it's different now this one here where it has that sweep in it at the bottom what I can do, and I've made a video, just find my YouTube video that talks about making uh, a broad axe handle that, that swung either left or right. And I go over that really clearly of how you, uh, when you lay, you cut it out like you normally would as far as your pattern goes, but then you want to put your, uh, your neck where you want a lot of the swing down here where you're getting a lot of sweep. Okay, and then you can orient it so that you'll get that... Uh, grain to travel right along the strength of that of that axe head okay so this is splitting out ash this is the butt log and that's where we're going to get the sweeps in this wood so I will dry this uh, had a great chat the other day with uh, Frederick at uh, Garant's he's my boss right now I'm scaling wood for Garant's in Woodstock and man a guy is a fountain of knowledge really really sharp guy and we were talking about drying wood and uh, free, free water and then trapped water in the cells and how to do it and what, how much time you need to do it. So it's all really, really interesting. But of course, I tried kiln drying my hickory a, a few years back when I was still uh, working at the college and we had a big kiln. That was a no-no. <laughs> okay. If you try to take down, uh, take too much moisture out of hickory or other woods too quickly, you're going to get a lot of checks. And you'll get lateral chucks along the length of the handle, which is really bad. So what I do, once I have them split out like this, I'm going to fill my wheelbarrow up, and I get down, and I make a stack of seven one way, seven the other. Okay, give them a little bit of room, and I go bark down, bark up, bark down, bark up. And then I'll stack them there. So now I'm about two years ahead with my ash. I'm only about a year ahead right now with my hickory. And I've, got, I've almost got my trip lined up for Connecticut, and I'll do a video when we head down to the state side. And, uh, and get some, uh, some logs down there, some hickory logs. And, uh, and I'll show you what I'm doing down there when I'm looking at them, okay? So I should be able to find, I'm gonna have a dozen logs down there. We're gonna get down here in a couple of weeks. So in a few weeks, uh, if you subscribe to my channel, you're gonna get that as soon as it comes out. I'll show you what I'm looking at for hickory logs. So I'm, I'm looking for pig nut and uh, shag bark, which are usually have smaller hearts and more sapwood. So I get a lot of white wood out of them. And, uh, and they're both tough as nails, man. It's beautiful wood. Actually, all the hickories are pretty good. Now, I thought that was really tough wood until I got on. Now, oh, yeah, another thing. <laughs> if you're interested in wood, I want to talk about this, too, while we're here. Okay? And I'll, do, I'll likely do another video about, about this because some people click off before I get to the end of these videos. But I've learned a lot about ash, about species of ash. So, we know that there's black ash and white ash, okay? And they're fairly common here in New Brunswick. Black ash, you know, because it's usually grown in a wet place along a brook. It's got really corky, sh uh, shaggy bark, okay? And it, it, it falls right off. And you run your hand on it, the bark just falls right off. You can tell this stuff here doesn't fall off. Now, as white ash gets bigger and bigger, these diamonds will start falling off. And underneath, it's more rectangular, okay? It's more blocular. New word from the East Coast Lumberjack, blocular. <laughs> but they're not tapered diamonds. It actually has like square angles in the bark. And it looks very similar to older black ash bark, but it's not. Okay, and usually you can tell by how much water's around. Now, the other thing, there's another species of ash in the Northeast, and it's called green ash. <laughs> now, for years, I, I was getting good, uh, beautiful white ash wood, and I was usually getting it off of well-drained sites, okay, so on slopes, and I'm on the ridge here, Keswick Ridge, and there were a lot of these, this stuff here that I'm getting from Kent's well-drained site, okay, you can tell us it's quite a slope and the water's not sticking around. So it's nice, beautiful white wood, and it's hard, it's nice, tough wood. Now I went to two places, I went to Stanley, New Brunswick, and there was a place out there, a guy was getting me some logs, 
and it was on a it was a wet area and I could tell it was pretty flat and I could tell there was a lot of ice out there it was in the winter time we were in there and we cut one of those trees down and brought it to the side and I can tell when I look at the end okay when it's not white ash well drained white ash it's get what I called mealy okay so the grain gets a little bit tighter on it and uh, the ends get a little bit more when you're cutting with a chainsaw. It, there's a lot more fuzz, okay, along the edge of the, uh, the the cut surface that you've just cut. Now, I always thought I was getting the black ash, but I couldn't figure out <laughs> that black ash was getting so big. And I've talked about this. I thought, well, maybe it's a hybrid. Maybe it's a black ash crossed with a white ash. And, of course, you don't hear a lot about green ash. So, because I'm with Fred, and Fred knows ash, <laughs> we started talking about green ash. So I went on a website, it's called the Wood Database. If you want to know more about wood, go to the Wood Database. It's a beautiful website. I don't know who did it, but I love it. <laughs> so it gives you a lot of, it gives you your Jenka hardness of your wood, okay? How tough it is. It gives you your, uh, uh, your MOBs and your MO, uh, modulus of rupture, MOR, and modulus of whatever the other one is. So there's rupture and then there's, uh, there's uh, flexibility, all that stuff is there. So it has it for every wood species in the world. It's awesome. So when we got talking about black ash and white ash, because we're buying ash uh, for uh, snow shovel handles, and we got talking about black, and of course I was scaling out in the yard, and some of the wood came in, and it wasn't this diamond bark, it was the square bark. And I thought, aha, there it is, that's a that black ash. It wasn't black ash. Okay, some of it was white with the diamonds fluffing off, sloughing off of it, okay? But there was also some green ash there. And I got talking to Fred and he said, no, this is green ash. And I said, where's that green? So, so he took me to the wood database, okay? And I also went to the other good book is uh, Native Trees Canada, another really good book. And I have it from my college days when I was training to be a forester. And I looked at green ash, and actually, guess what? Green ash grows all over the place up in the northeast, just like white and black. So I thought, okay, well, that explains a lot. And then I started reading down through the silvics of it. Green ash likes its feet wet, wetter than white ash. White ash is typically on well-drained sites. Green ash is where, when I was at that place in Stanley, and the other place I went was to my, uh, my good buddy Sheldon Mc, uh, McKin McKinney up in uh, Canterbury. And he had, man, they were beautiful, big, tall trees. 60 feet up without a branch and I thought I had died and gone to heaven <laughs> so I was cutting down all these big logs and bringing them out and man when I started processing them I went oh my soul it, it, it's got that it's got the fuzzy end it's got the tight green oh I'm in the black ash well it wasn't black ash it was green ash now green ash is a little bit weaker wood than white okay and that bothered me because I like making a top quality handle but when I went to the wood database, and check it out, check out green ash, the uh, flexibility and the hardness and the uh, hardness and what's the other one? Anyways, ch check, check out all the, th I'm talking so fast my brain can't keep up, <laughs> which is pretty hard to believe. Anyhow, you'll see that actually, uh, and in our business, we, could, we can't use uh, wood that falls below a certain toughness, okay, and uh, the rupture. Rupture was the other one, uh, modul modulus of rupture. And we can't use, so when I looked at it, he said it can't go below, I think it was 12,000. And of course, green ash is higher than that. It's a little bit less than white, but it's it's a pretty good wood. And of course, I was always panicking that it wasn't quite as tough because it, it works a lot easier with a spoke shave. It does feel a little bit mealy. And I did take one of those in when I did my handle test. If you go way back in my YouTube videos, you'll see that there's some handle testing I did. And some of them had really narrow grains, okay, really narrow growth rings. That was that green ash. And actually, when we tried to bust it up, <laughs> because we busted a pile of wood in there, to find out how tough it was, it was a little bit weaker than white ash, but not a lot. And I was surprised. I thought, wow, that's tough. I thought it was going to be a lot weaker, because it, it is mealy and it's easy to work. But surprisingly, it was pretty tough. So now, finally, I'm breathing a sigh of relief. Even, what I would even do over the last few years is I would not even use that green ash for uh, racing axe handles because I thought, no, it's too weak, it's too weak. Now, even though it is, a, a, and it's minor, like it might be 5% to 10% uh, weaker than what white ash is, but white ash is pretty tough wood. Not as tough as, as hickory, but it's pretty tough. So, 
it, it, it actually waylaid all that. So now I can, knowing I used to throw those aside in my pile, and I used to keep them for like things like uh, hatchet handles and stuff like that that I knew weren't going to be pried on a ton. Um, but now I know I can use it for all of it. Now, I've been avoiding it every time I go and buy logs. <laughs> so I don't have any left. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about getting a green ash from the East Coast Lumberjack, even though it's a good wood. Okay, it's a tough wood. It's good wood. Um, it's not quite as good as white, but it's right there. Okay, so it is good. So green ash is this mystery wood. I've been trying to find out what is this wood for the last 10 years. It's not a hybrid between, and actually maybe it is way back when God created the, the birds and the bees. Um, maybe that was uh, the green ash is the cross between white and black. I have no idea. But what I do know, it's in the ash family. It's tougher than black, but it's not, it's just a smidgen. Uh, it's not quite as tough as white. So that's, that's the problem solved after all this time. It's green ash. And it looks very, very similar to white. Like even when I look at the buds, the leaves, it's very, very similar. The only difference is where it grows, okay? And if you've got a flat site where water might lay a little bit, you're gonna, green ash is gonna propagate there and white's not gonna do well, so it's not gonna grow. So anyways, that's this week's video on splitting out a butt piece, how to make the most of it, and what to, where to use it, okay? Where to use it. If you're making handles with a twisted eye or something, you can use it there. Now, the other thing you can do, like I said, I can just make use this for a 28 inch handle, okay? Now I'm wasting, another 16 18 inches of wood but I'd rather send a straight handle out and it doesn't go out of here unless it's good I'd rather send a straight handle out and, and use that for firewood rather than putting a lot of run out in your handle so hopefully that's uh, a little bit more insight this week if you like it give me a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you next week East Coast Lumberjack signing off